this is delicate, and these are the sorts of topics that can get people canceled. In fact, um, Philip asked me earlier what video I wanted to push out. If you text data to 33777, you can be a subscriber, and we push out interviews, videos from the show. I've actually got an interview coming out uh, soon uh, with a farmer uh, down in South Georgia. Uh, he runs a farm that is one of the American leaders in uh, the return to localized farming, and he's highly profitable. White Oak Farms, they they do uh, poultry, they do pork, they do beef, they convert the cows and the leather goods in addition to the, the beef. It, it, it's an interesting interview. If you're a subscriber, you get it. Then you can subscribe by texting data to 33777. And every day we push out videos, uh, one video monologue to subscribers who may not listen to the show, but we want to highlight something I've said. And, and the one that I told Philip to push out is the one we may not be able to push out. It's this one. Because YouTube and most of social media has become deeply deeply hostile to anyone who speaks the truth on transgenderism and the social contagion that it has become among a lot of mentally ill people and a lot of girls struggling to fit in. Someone sent me a meme yesterday, said baby boomers struggle with the idea that they wore bell bottoms. Gen X struggles with the idea that its haircuts were so bad. Millennials struggle with the idea that they all had the emo goth phase. Gen Z will struggle with the idea that they all chopped off their nether regions. Makes a point. Lisa Davis is a researcher on this issue. I saw her story. Uh, it was tied to a retired Navy SEAL detransitioning. The transition made it fa made this person famous. Um, nearly 10 years ago, this Navy SEAL transitioned as transgender, and he is detransitioning and calls on Americans to wake up. Everything you see on CNN with my face, do not believe the words. Chris Beck, formerly known as Kristen Beck, told conservative influencer Robbie Starbuck in an interview published this month. Everything that happened to me for the last 10 years destroyed my life. I destroyed my life. I'm not a victim. I did it to myself, but I had help. I take full responsibility. I went on CNN and everything else, and that's why I'm here right now. I'm trying to correct that. He gained notoriety in 2013 when he spoke to Anderson Cooper about transitioning as a woman. He says, I was used. I was naive. I was in a really bad way. I got taken advantage of. I got propagandized. I got used badly by a lot of people who had knowledge way beyond me. They knew what they were doing, and I didn't. Beck served in the Navy for 20 years, including on SEAL Team 6. He was deployed 13 times. He received 50 medals and ribbons for his service. And now he says he's speaking out because there are thousands of gender clinics being put up all over America. As soon as kids go in and say, I'm a tomboy, or this makes me feel comfortable, then a psychologist says, oh, you're transitioned, uh, transgender, and the next day you're on hormones, the same hormones they are using for medical castration of pedophiles, and now they're giving them to healthy 13-year-olds. Now, a lot of people say this is all exaggerated. But Lisa Selen Davis is a writer and speaker. has been in the uh, New York Times, CNN, the Washington Post, covers the gender wars. I want to read you something from a piece that she wrote. The 2015 guidelines on gender-conforming surgeries were created with a certain cohort in mind. At the turn of the 21st century, the Dutch had designed a medical protocol for what was then called gender identity disorder based on a small group, mostly male, that had long-lasting childhood-onset gender dysphoria and didn't have other serious mental health issues. They seemed to fare well after medical transition in adolescence, but the methodology asserting this wasn't terribly reliable. 
By contrast, the young people who sought care at Swedish clinics after 2015 were increasingly teenage girls with multiple psychiatric diagnoses. And there were a lot of them. It rose from 4 to 77 per 100,000 inhabitants. The guidelines were written for what we thought was a smaller group of patients and also more homogenous. The same trend was found in Finland, where clinicians first started providing medical treatment for gender dysphoric youth in 2011. Right, a Kurtu Kalitalia Hino, chief psychiatrist in the Department of Adolescent Psychiatry at Tempere University Hospital in Finland, said this came about in part over political pressure, as well as growing awareness that the Dutch and British were medically transitioning kids. In 2015, she and her colleagues started to see the same dramatic increase in female adolescents with gender dysphoria. The number of referrals skyrocketed. There were five-fold more girls coming in. In addition, they seemed to not have an organic kind of gender dysphoria. Rather, they appear to be very much influenced by other adolescents. What we're seeing here is peer pressure. More and more doctors are starting to raise concerns that medicine and the like, they have gone too far. Doctors have gone too far. Governments have gone too far. What we have is a social contagion. There have been story after story after story, largely dismissed in the mainstream media, of large groups of kids in schools coming out as suffering gender dysphoria. Many times they're kids with autism on the spectrum. Someone in the school comes out, a teacher comes out, and the kids decide that they have this problem as well. We're seeing a real social problem. What's mind-numbing about this? is that so much of the government and the media elite are on the side of the social contagion. So here's the thing. I don't think the 2020 election was stolen, and I think that there's a social contagion on the right that makes a lot of people on the right hostile to truth. That's going to offend some of you, I know, more bluntly said than I probably should say it, but I do think that there is a social contagion run amok on the right where uh, you define yourself by people on the other side. And if other people on the, on the left, if they say X, you're going to say negative X. You're not going to say Y. You're not going to offer an alternative. You're going to take a position diametrically opposed to the person who said it because of your tribal identity. It is a war with truth. But the other side has the same war with truth. The people who will tell you the truth about the election can't tell you the truth about gender. Because people on the right say this gender dysphoria stuff isn't really real. It's a mental health problem. It's not a natural phenomenon. So people on the left dig in their heels. They take not position Y, but position negative X, the position diametrically opposed to the people they don't like. Both sides defining themselves by the opposite of the other, not as a contrary position to the other, but the direct opposite of the other. And in this situation, it's costing the lives and well-being and mental health of thousands of kids a year. Because the people who will tell you the truth about one thing can't bring themselves to tell you the truth about this because the tribe opposite them doesn't agree with it. They're captured by their hostility of the other side. They're not captured by truth. But I think there's something else going on here too. You know we all have conspiracy theories. Everyone believes something that ultimately is a conspiracy. I'll tell you mine. Shh. Let me tell you one of my conspiracy theories. I personally believe, without any evidence, many of the people on the left who push gender dysphoria and gender conforming surgeries, sex reassignment surgeries is what they really are, If you were to ask them, if you were to probe them, 
you would find out many of them think the world is too full of people. They're Malthusians. So why not embrace gender dysphoria? And you can take a child, provide a hysterectomy, or provide castration, and ensure that child does not contribute to the human overpopulation crisis. It's convenient. Isn't it? Isn't it? That, that's my conspiracy theory. I got, I got no evidence. I mean, it, it, remarkably, these people do overlap. I mean, pretty precisely. The people who believe in gender dysphoria are also obsessive about climate change and the end of the world as we know it. So, of course, it fits. And they probably don't even have a conscious bit of it. But there's something else here, too. And this is my faith angle that gets me into trouble. This is where I get canceled. There's also something spiritual at play. If you're the devil and you you know, because you know the devil knows God, Satan could quote scripture to Christ in the wilderness. Even the demons recognize God. They just don't accept him as their Lord. Well, you know the gates of hell will not prevail. I mean, y'all, I, 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 this isn't crazy theology here. Satan in the desert well, tempted Christ by quoting scripture. He took it out of context, like so many pastors, certain churches, I'm going to make an Episcopal crack here, are willing to do. He knows the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So why not sterilize the church? Hmm? Hmm? potential converts. Why not sterilize them so they can still be converted later, but if the devil can get to them first through the means and ends of society, well, then they can still join the church, but they're not going to be adding to the church. The gates of hell may not prevail, but why not limit the numbers over which it can't prevail? I mean, look, there's a spiritual component to this, I think. I, I, I Listen, this, this is the part where, where people who aren't believers, they tune out and say, oh, Erickson's lost his mind again. But take the spiritual component out of it and just look at the world component. You've got a bunch of people who are obsessed about the end of the world. They are obsessed about climate change. They are obsessed about overpopulation. It is not a coincidence these people have embraced an ideology that causes the sterilization of others. It is not a coincidence that these people embrace an ideology that twists truth. And the fallout, the damage, the collateral damage are the kids. The kids, more and more data out there is showing that kids are doing this based on peer pressure. Kids are doing this as part of political pressure. Kids are doing this because they're liberal single mothers. Frankly, that's cruel of me to say, but it's true. If you if you want to know it, it's true. A lot of these kids are, are in single mother households who have problems with men. They have a son and they decide my son really wants to be a daughter because he doesn't want to be part of the oppressive, oppressive patriarchy. And they push their son into doing this. Or their grandson. You got to be careful. Our society is playing with fire. Playing with real fire. Playing with the extermination of a species. And it happens to be our own. As they push an idea and an ideology that defies evolutionary science, defies biology, defies theology, defies everything and becomes a theology and an ideology unto itself. So ask yourselves, one of the cause celebs was this Navy SEAL, Kristen Beck, who's actually Chris Beck, but he became a woman and was put on television, paraded across the networks, a Navy SEAL, he becomes a she. How many of them will now cover him as he transitions back to being he? How many of them will cover him? the truth. Don't hold your breath for much.